According to Greek mythology, the god Zeus created women or woman to punish man. He created a woman called Pandora. He gave her two things. He gave her a box, which he told her never to open, and he gave her a curiosity, which he knew that she could not contain. He knew that eventually she would open the box and release upon the world all the ills and evils that have plagued us since. Tonight, I would like to tell you a true story that not only illustrates that the sin of curiosity still lies in a woman's bosom, but I would also illustrate with horrifying clarity that the power of the supernatural still exists. My story begins in Ireland around the turn of the last century. A young man returned to his ancestral home with his bride. And for the first few weeks there, she busied herself getting to know her neighbors, the countryside, her servants, but above all, the house that was her home. It was a large, rambling type of house with nooks and crannies, long, endless corridors, interjoining the staircases. She was quite happy exploring this house for hours upon hours, until eventually she thought she knew the house from cellar to attic. And when she thought that she knew the house from top to bottom, she discovered herself one day in the west wing in a corridor she had never seen before. On the wall of that corridor was a tapestry depicting the casting out of Lucifer from heaven. And behind the tapestry was a door, a locked door. She tried every key on her key wing, but to no avail. The door remained locked. She placed her ear against that door and thought that she heard sounds similar to the sobbing of a child. She asked her servants about the door and all they would do would avert their eyes and say, ask the master. And that night at dinner, she did. She said, what is the room? What is in there? Why is it locked? A coldness came over her husband. He looked at her with eyes that were both angry and frightened. He said, you must never ever attempt to enter that room. And she said, why? And he said, I do not know. All I know is that in 400 years that my family have lived here, nobody has ever set foot in that room, and nobody will. Please do not bring up that subject again. Do not talk to me about the room or the door. The weeks passed, but she could not get rid of this thought of the door. She was intrigued with it. Curiosity was aroused. The room was like a magnet. It drew her back time and time and time. She would stand in front of that door and wonder what was in there. And then fate smiled on her, or so it seemed. One day when she was placing some flowers upon an old dresser, she noticed a small recess she put her hands in, and as she put her hand in, a small wooden lever moved underneath her exploring fingers. A panel, the back of the dresser slid open, and there was a dust-covered key. She knew, without any doubt, that she had found the key to the locked door. 
Now, the chance for her curiosity to be satisfied. She waited, she waited, she waited. Until finally her husband was called away on business. He would not return to the following day. That night, she dismissed her servants early. She retired to her room and waited. And when she was sure that the house was completely still, with a smile of anticipation, she took the key from her pocket and aided by the flickering lamp, ascended the darkness of the stairs, down the corridor, until as she last stood in front of that door which had intrigued her for so long. With beating heart, she put that key into the door and a single hollow click it opened and the door slowly moved inwards. <laughs> there was nothing in the room that she could see except an inky blackness. She took a step, another step, another step, until she found herself in the center of the room. She raised her lamp above her head, and as she did, the flame flickered and died. She was engulfed in this darkness, a darkness so heavy, so thick, it was almost physical. She screamed. It was the scream of a woman totally terrified. A scream of a woman who knew that she was about to be destroyed by her own curiosity. A woman screaming because she had finally found out what was in that room and mingled with her own screams with another sound a sound so obscene so primeval it defied definition she looked over her shoulder only to hear the door slowly close knowing that whatever escape she had was cut off and as the door closed it not only cut off her escape, it cut off her last fearful sobs. What made her scream? What evil was in that room? What supernatural force made that door close on a turn? I have no idea, but if I ever find out, I'll let you know. <laughs>